I, I want to give you I want to give you something that uh, is a progression. Things in life work in the areas of progression. Uh, you know, when I was talking about anger, I said anger went from anger to frustration to rage to uh, bitterness to hatred to evil. It was a progression that starts with one thing and becomes something else. And the, there's also, there's there's four points to a wounded heart, or not, not that. Maybe I could just say uh, the four stages of hurt. You ever see somebody that's hurt? And you're thinking, where are you going with this? What is what is it? I mean, what's happening in you? Because you see people when they get hurt over something, they seldom ever stay in that state. It always like it, it grows a little bit more. And I think this is important for you to realize because as you're dealing with people that are hurt, uh, you got to understand if if you don't alter the direction that they're going with this, it will become something else. You know, it's kind of like I said concerning anger. Anger never leaves you in that state, it always takes you someplace else when it's allowed to continue. Well, when someone is hurt, uh, it, it starts with a wounded heart. When someone gets hurt, some event takes place and it wounds them. Uh, a, a wounded heart, and it, it kicks everything out of balance when somebody gets a wounded heart. Suddenly, everything becomes oversensitive. And, and a, a wounded heart, kind of like anger, it turns into something else. It takes you someplace else. I think it's important when you have a wounded heart that you get that dealt with. And, and you can always tell when there's a wound there because of sensitivity. Now, we can certainly say that in the natural. You know, if I hurt my hand, there's going to be a sensitivity that's going to be there. I'll guard it. I'll protect it. I'll get it x-rayed. I'll get it. Whatever. What, are, what do I need to do to take care of this of this hand. So when I have a wounded heart, things get kicked out of balance and suddenly I become hypersensitive to everything. And when when that is just left and a person is left to cook in that wounded situation, that wounded heart, it, it takes them to a cold heart. And what I mean by that is they will avoid any issues or meaningful contact. When people develop a cold heart, you ever see someone in a marriage where it's just a cold heart and that they're basically coexisting? They're just there together. That's all it is to it. They've they've got kind of a they're just cold to one another. You know, uh, when it, when it's cold, you kind of you know you, you you kind of just huddle and and you know just basically try to to care for yourself. You've left that wounded stage and and it's affected you to where now. You're starting to avoid any issues, any meaningful contact. You don't want to talk. You're just, you're just. I'm here with you, but I don't want to talk about any of the issues. But it doesn't stop there. It goes from there to a hard heart. Now, what I mean by a hard heart is you become insensitive, almost uncaring, very businesslike. You know, there's no emotion that's connected. When I'm dealing with somebody and I have a hard heart, they can be going through really difficult situations and you just look at them as though that meant nothing, nothing whatsoever. Uh, your, the heart becomes, becomes hardened. And, and uh, over a period of time, what that hard heart will do is it will take you to an apathetic heart. Uh, you know, the, the, let me just say, the, the opposite of love is not hate. The opposite of love is apathy, indifference. I don't care. I, I don't care. That's apathy. That's apathy. That's that's when that's when you have moved. Uh, you have moved into a very dangerous position, to where you're functioning opposite of what love is, and you just become apathetic to that situation. I'm indifferent to it. I don't care whether it sinks or not. I don't care whether it's up down. I don't care. And and this one is usually springs out of meaningful is, meaningless issues. Um, you know, I, I think I think that we have to understand that there is a progression that takes place when someone is hurt, when somebody is wounded. Uh, you know, the wounded heart. Then they go to the the cold heart. Uh, just the the I'm, I'm avoiding you to the hard heart. I'm I'm suddenly. I'm just kind of insensitive and uncaring and businesslike to an apathetic heart. I, I'm totally indifferent. I, I don't care. I don't care. You know, and I've seen so many people that even in relationships with each other, 
that were wounded in one way or another, and they never got counseling for it. They never got help. And it it was, it, and the result is, is by the time it reaches this place of apathy, uh, many times they cannot recover. Many times they cannot recover. That's when they say, "Well, I just don't love each other anymore." Well, it's it's. I don't think that's it at all. I think what what they're dealing with when they reach this apathetic place or this hard place, that's the result of a hurt. That's the result of a wound that they got. And, you know, it's almost like I'm, I'm sure that probably if I was to get a wound in my arm or hand, if I leave it, there are probably different stages of crisis there. You know, one is the fact that the, the wound happened. It's very sensitive. But, but then you can also get to the, you know, the point that, that it, it begins to fester. Uh, the possibility of infection setting in, of swelling setting in, to going from there to where you can't even get to the place that there's gangrene that can set in. I mean, to the point that literally you could lose a limb as a result of a wound. And and it, it progresses. So it's that way in the natural. It's also that way in our heart, our relationships with other people. So I just want to say that it's very important that you uh, assess the condition of your relationship, of your whatever, and say, where do I fit in this? Or maybe if I'm dealing with this, at which stage am I at this particular point? Because it makes a tremendous difference as to whether or not you can recover or not. I've seen people I've seen people reach places of apathy and to where they just didn't care anymore. I mean, literally, it was a total indifference. They end up staying with one another, but it was like... I don't care. Yeah, I don't care. They can do what they want to do. I'm going to do what I want to do. And it is a very horrible condition for any relationship to be involved in. So I want you to think about real quickly those four stages of hurt. Number one is the wounded heart. Uh, that's 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 where everything gets kicked out of balance. Everything come, becomes hypersensitive when a wounded heart. Then you develop a cold heart. That's number two. Cold heart, you begin to avoid issues. You begin to freeze things out. Uh, avoid contact, kind of coexist. The third one is is the hard heart. The hard heart is where I become insensitive. You know, it's 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 it's, a, it's got a thick exterior. You can you can hit it, touch it prod it, but it doesn't respond. But the fourth one, and one that's very dangerous, is the apathetic heart, The which is, like I said, the opposite of love isn't hate, it's apathy. And that's when that's when you, you just say, I don't care. I, I don't care. And, and so these are things that you need to, you need to be aware of. Anytime you have situations like this that happens, anytime you start down this road of progression, it it takes you someplace. And it can, like I just said a while ago, it can start with a wound on your hand, but it can turn into you're having to, to dismember that part of your body because of a wound that took place. So you need to stop that today. You need to do whatever you need to do to make sure that 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 place in your relationships don't take you there. Okay. So that's, that's just what I got with you today. I just wanted to have just a couple of moments to, to, uh, um, speak maybe into your situation. I want you to, uh, allow yourself to maybe fit into one of these. If you've been wounded at some time in a relationship, where do you fit in that? And if you do, you need to, I, I encourage you to seek some counseling with it. I, I really believe that counseling is important for everybody. A husband and wife, when they get to a place that they cannot resolve things, sometimes they need to get somebody else that can help them work through it. You, you, you need that. I've always been amazed at people who had such incredible impasses in their life, but they wouldn't allow anyone to talk to them concerning the situations that they were going in. I thought how self-destructive that is. You know, how, how completely I've seen husbands and wives, they, they, well, I'm not going to a counselor. You know, they will go through the pain of a, of being literally ripped apart, the pain for their family, the pain financially, the, the pain in all of these areas, but they won't go sit down for an hour and listen to a counselor, help them work through a difficult situation. That's just dumb. It is. It's just dumb. And, and, uh, you need to never, ever allow yourself 
to to uh, be open. You know, I, this is something that I have said quite frequently. This is something my father gave me back in 1973. He spoke to me and he said, Jerry, always be open to constructive criticism. Now, not destructive, but constructive. Uh, constructive criticism tells you when you've got something in your life that would be better if you changed. You know, constructive criticism would be would be like you don't realize you're doing this, and I I think that if you made this change, it would be better. Some company spends tens of thousands of dollars for someone to come in, look at their company, analyze their company, and give constructive criticism. So this is very important that you always be open to it. If your life has stalled out, if you're not moving forward, I encourage you to find somebody who can look objectively at you and give you a perspective that maybe either you haven't been able to see because of whatever obstacles that have been in your way, or maybe you just, you know, you just have been hard and and mad and whatever, and just refuse to see it. So you need that. Everyone, Everyone needs that. Everybody, I believe. Actually, my my personal feeling is, I I I think that every year, people need to go through counseling. They need to they need to talk to somebody about their stuff. Back with the computers, of course, we don't do it anymore. But they used to have to when computers started coming out, uh, and everybody was getting them back during the eighties. And as we went to the nineties, they they would do what they would call defrag. They would defrag the hard drive. And that's because so many cookies and various different things would just get in and clutter it up. And you're, so you had to go through a process of defragging to clear all of that junk out. Well, a lot of times in our lives, we need, we need, we need to have a time where we sit down and defrag from all of the confusion, the hurt, the uncertainty, the things that have been said to us. And uh, you could use that. Okay, but that's what I've got for you today. And so I just want you to take a few moments and uh, look at these four stages of hurt And I think it'll be something that you can apply to your life. I'm going to ask, please, that you push like, push share, and also subscribe. Would deeply, deeply appreciate it. And I've enjoyed being with you today. And I'm looking forward to you. I'm going to be back tomorrow. I'll just plan on talking to you then. So I want you guys to have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Hey, listen, be sure and leave a a note. And uh, I'll I'll respond. I'll get back to you. All right, I'll talk to you then. Bye-bye.